The full episode is now available on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Please see the link in the description for more details. And we are back to talk about, again talk about, the House of the Dragon teaser trailer. Of course, we have to milk this thing for all it's worth. We need the views, Preston. The well, the well that never ends. Never we ends. We can talk about this trailer forever. But, you know, as trailers go, it's, you know, I suppose it's a bit rich. You know, there there's a lot of, um, there was a lot of question on what season two would have and what scenes would include because it's just you're dealing with so much history and so many events that they were going to, you know, what's going to be cut out and what's going to be included. And so I think that's why people are talking about it so much is just that there is a lot to talk about considering it was just a teaser trailer. You know, I'm surprised. I'm surprised how much we can, we can, you know, just uh, shoot the shit about it. True. And uh, in, during the whole thing, one of the th couple of things I've noticed is that there were several changes from the book. Scenes that we got in the teaser trailer that will be in season two that won't mm. be, uh, that weren't in the books. And I have six of them yes. here, six scenes during the whole thing that uh, may be a change from the books going forward in season two. Do you mind if we get into it immediately? Okay. All right, let's do it. The first change is, in case you didn't notice, is that, um, number one, Rhaenyra doesn't have the quartered sigil. Hmm. What does her flag look like instead? Uh, the normal Targaryen sigil. That's it. They, she's just going standard, normal Targaryen sigil. There's no quartered, no quartered sigil. Which is a shame because I we had this conversation uh, last time, several months ago. I thought it would... If they did the quartered sigil, it would confuse the audience because on one, uh, they would have the Targaryen sigil on the quartered sigil twice, the Valarian sigil and the House Aaron sigil for her mom. Yeah. And I guess that might have confused people, but at the same time, you could also argue they have a bunch of Targaryen flags laying around anyway. Why spend the extra dollars? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's that. I, I, you know, Rhaenyra's, Rhaenyra's sigil being quartered like that. It, it it's not that there shouldn't be a Valarian quarter in there because there absolutely should considering that you're pulling in Corlys, like the richest man around with this huge fleet you know Rhaenys with her dragon her children uh, bear the Valarian name she's a widow to Laenor like she, she's integrated with House Valarian quite a bit and the Valarian armies are fighting House Aaron on the other hand yes Emma Aaron you know, was, was an Aaron. I wish she was half Aaron. I mean, I guess everybody's half at some point, but, but like, you know, like I get it. She comes from the Aaron's, but at the same time, you know, it's not like house Aaron was on her side from the beginning. They had to work for it, you know? Um, and uh, so the, it, it having a quarter meeting on like being on equal footing to Valarian is, is just not, it's just not the case, you know? Um, and it doesn't really represent like, you know, I don't know the, the sides in the war. So, you know, had it been quartered Targaryens, Valarians, I think it may have been a, a, a sigil they could use, but I think for the show, because a lot of rando people are going to be watching, it's just, it would just be a, a little messy for them, for people watching and being like, what does that mean? Wait, Aaron and Valarian. I mean, the Valarian. I think they would get, but they. I think people would be scratching their head, wondering why the why the Aaron sigil was there. True, and honestly, this is one of those changes from the books that I would be completely okay with for the casuals. Um, and it would, like you just said, it would make sense because you know the Aarons do not stand on equal ground in terms of war contribution as the Valarians, unless they're changing that, and we're getting we're going to get more House Aaron soldiers really digging in, fighting in the war. But um, I'd be okay with, like, the, the, the quartered sigil, two Targaryens, and two Valarions. That would make sense. I'd be okay with that change. Yeah, yeah. I'd be okay with that change. Yeah, I would too. But they didn't go that change either. <laughs> well, so. well, you know, uh, I, know when people, I know people hate when I say this, but to be fair, we still haven't gotten the other story trailers. This is just a teaser to see what's coming, but we haven't gotten the story deep trailer yet, which will probably be in a couple of months. Yeah. The other thing that's original from the books okay. is number two, Rhaenyra meeting with someone on the beach. We actually had this discussion privately on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Rhaenyra mostly just stays on Dragonstone until it's time to go take King's Landing. Yes, yes. Um, 
the uh, lot, there there was a lot of debate on on who on who that was and whose dragon could it be. I think when when um, people saw it, it looked like a face off, and so people were wondering if that was that was Dreamfire or some other uh, other dragon. But the color did look gray, and so everyone's kind of saying, "Well, it, it sea smoke, but who who is she standing? Uh, you know, across from is is Lanor back?" And the answer is no. Um, I think uh, having talked to Dragon Demands and and uh, seeing you know piecing together stuff from spy reports, we know that it is simply Adam of Hull um, facing Rhaenyra with sea smoke. It is sea smoke, but it's it's Adam of Hull, and. Um, it kind of makes sense that it's Adam of Hall. It's essentially the scene is probably Adam of Hall swearing allegiance to Rhaenyra, which is a slight change from the book because in the book you kind of, we're kind of just introduced to the dragon seeds all at once, and you know Adam of Hall is just like on this list. But later in the story, Adam of Hall um, is special because he um, is accused of 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 betraying Rhaenyra because of his bastardy, but never did. Um, and it, there, there, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, a meaningful story with him. Um, and also the, it's a, the story's just kind of weird because like why Rhaenyra would not trust bastards when supposedly her children were bastards. But then again, in the books, her children might not be bastards. So it's all, all sorts of odd things. But, you know, there's issues as well. Like, she's meeting Adam of Hull and he's claiming to be a bastard of Lenor, um, which would be weird for her, you know, in the show at least. Uh, we don't know if Lenor is actually gay in the book, but, like, she, in the show, she definitely knows Lenor's gay. And and to find a, a bastard would be very interesting. Um, and also to be riding her... her, her um, her missing husband's dragon is interesting. And then just the whole narrative of him, of him being true to her, um, despite everyone not trusting bastards and what that means. Um, that, that story is late. That's it's being focused on now. I see as later on, um, in future seasons, Adam of Hull is going to have a, um, a story. Yeah. Well, the, it's funny that you mentioned that, you're, you're, I keep forgetting. You're so right. Ryan Condal really wanted a definitive answer for a lot of this stuff. Is Lenor gay? Mm. Well, there were rumors in the show. No, no, no. He's gay. He's gay. No, he's gay. Uh, is, yeah. is is Harwin Strong Rhaenyra's lover or you know father of her children? Well, there were rumors. No, no. It's it's that's that that look that he gives her carrying her child. No, no, no. That's he's definitely yeah, the father. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, she straight up she straight up tells Damon like there's no yeah. there's no ambiguity. You know like. I mean, I suppose I suppose there's still some wiggle room that Jace is is, is Kristen Cole's, but um, certainly certainly the, the second two children are are Lenor's or not Lenor or Harwin's. Yeah, dude, that'd be so great if there was a scene where Rhaenyra confirms it in the show, like Jace, Luke, that, Luke, that... Luke and um, Luke and uh, Joffrey may be Harwin's, but Jace is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how juicy it gets. Which is a shame Dang because days. for the people who don't know this, and I think you pointed this out, Rhaenyra and Kristen Cole don't see each other again, ever again, as far as we know, right? Right, right. In the books, um, Kristen Cole is irrelevant to to Rhaenyra. She doesn't talk about him. He talks about her. She never talks about him. He goes off and fights his wars, and he dies, and no one gives a shit. <laughs> like no like he just dies yeah the historian the historians give a shit but no it, 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 there's no love lost like to any it's not like the greens mourn him the blacks don't mourn him he's just dead 
Uh, you know, like it's it, he's just so inconsequential. <laughs> For people worried that Preston is giving you guys a spoiler, remember, Lainor was supposed to was said to have been dead in the books, but we know in the show it's otherwise. True. So they could yeah, they... maybe Kristen Cole is going to survive. We never know. <laughs> but but what's interesting is there, there's no face off between them. There's no showdown. There's no talking about things. There there is that with 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 Rhaenyra and Alicent, but there's no. There's no, uh, you know, there's no discussion or, or, um, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of stuff between Aegon and Rhaenyra. There's a lot of stuff between Rhaenyra and Alicent. Um, there's stuff between Aegon and, and Gerardis the Maester, but there's nothing between, <laughs> there's nothing between, like Kristen Cole doesn't get to, to be a, a player with these people. He's, he's, she's. They're just on a different level, which is very strange, you know. Um, uh, still on number two, we're near a meeting with someone on the beach. So before, it, it, I feel like it's somewhat now confirmed that that is Adam of Hull and, you know, Sea Smoke. People were saying how this could be Helena, which I thought mm. was it would be an interesting thing. Because once again, I said this on your stream and I'll say it here. Helena became a fan favorite out of fucking nowhere. So, yeah, out of fucking nowhere. So if they're paying. She doesn't do anything really. Yeah, in, in she's the, in quirky. The book, so it's like. Yeah, that's it. So, if if she's a fan favorite, there's there, it doesn't hurt to just give her more stuff to do. And you know, right. in the books, uh, she's there. Uh, Aegon marries her, has kids with her, and she's very sad, and then dies, and then her death sparks riots because the people loved her. So yes, um, when she dies, there's a rumor floating around that she was murdered. And so it's it's the uh, they accuse Rhaenyra and the gold cloaks, and that leads to riots. But um, so the re the reason Carmine well, the reason like Carmine and I are, like or at least me I'm stumbling with riots is that in the in the previews for season two we we know that there's two separate riots. That are, that are going to appear in season two. But these are all different from the big riot that is from the book. Mm -hmm. So in, in the show, it seems like there's a riot during during the children's funeral. And it seems like there's another riot, like a food riot later on. This is of, something uh, uh, Mr. Dragon Yamans, he pointed out, is that the, during the riot for the, 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 um, the funeral... Alicent, she's there, but she's wearing all black. And then in the right. in the same teaser trailer, there's a riot happening. But Alicent is not in all, in her all black outfit; she is in her normal green outfit. So green technically, outfit. we're getting two riots. Uh, funeral, two, two riots, and then we know that there is the riot mm -hmm. that uh, essentially, like when Helena when Helena dies, a rumor goes around that she was murdered, and then we get a huge riot led by the shepherd that is incredibly important because they break into the dragon pit and start killing the dragon. That's final season um, riot though. Yeah. That's a final that's, or, you know, or, you know, that's the, the Rhaenyra's downfall, like final thing. I mean, there might be more after that because Rhaenyra does escape King's landing and has a final kind of journey before she dies. But, um, we, you know, th th this is, a, th it's a very significant riot as everything goes down um during that you know joffrey's death uh um you know the the beginning of the end for for rhaenyra's like reign um and then it all ushers in the the, the moon of the three kings um kind of situation but um important very important because of the death of dragons probably you know so the death of dragons might even be more important than the, like the killing of all the dragons might be more important even than like than than Rhaenyra losing, um, and and having everything fall apart for her. But so it it all gets confused because there's just so now there's so many fucking riots, two riots this season, and that's not even the big riot. Well, you know, it, so. it it's all of course it has to lead up to, um, the final riot. So you have. You have Rainey's sparking off everything by doing what she did in episode nine of season one, where Maylees comes mm -hmm. out from and just kills a bunch of people. People are pissed, rightly so, but hey, whatever. The pearls of living in King's Landing. And then from from what I hear, rumors are 
from the leaks is that Rhaenyra sneaks into King's Landing and starts some bullshit there um, to lead a riot. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that might be the first one. And then the second riot is people are starving. So people are just getting slowly, slowly fed up with the bullshit. And I like, which leads to yeah. the final riot, which I like. By the way, oh, on my list, riots was number six. So uh, we're still at number two, but it's fine. We covered yeah, yeah, both yeah. of them. Um, the reason I mentioned Helena possibly meeting up with Rainier on the beach, that may be her, is because they could be giving Helena more things to do, which would be pretty cool. She was an interesting character. They gave her... You know, a little bit of an interesting thing going on in season one. She was quirky. She was unique. Yeah, so it's entirely possible that they get, they expanded her role. And maybe she's on the beach talking to Rhaenyra about this madness has to stop. You know, giving, giving her some agency, letting her do something. But it's most likely Adam of Hull swearing field. <laughs> Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad. Um, number three, Bela on Moon Dancer. This is different from the books, and I want you to repeat what you said to me on Facebook about Bela doing anything at all. Oh, I mean, oh, I said, did I? I forget what exactly I said. Did I say something like having having Bela go to the bathroom is like more is more than what she's what she does in the books? I mean, yeah, she doesn't really do anything not, until the end, right? Until the end, mm -hmm. until the end, there, there. When when Aegon finally comes to to um to uh, uh, Dragonstone at the very end of the war, like she she does have a fairly significant role in like the fate of Sunfire, um, but and, and like but you know uh, that that's it. She doesn't really do anything before that. Yeah, it, it's ba so, it's it's mo it's it's uh, in my list here. It's Rhaenyra, Bela, and Alicent, which we'll talk about later. These are the three characters, three women who basically stay in their design positions, like physically, where where they are physically, location wise, right. and they never leave. Rhaenyra always stays at Dragonstone. Bela, I think, stays at Dragonstone, or does she go to the Vale of Arryn to protect them with her dragon to to offer assurances? Um, I know one of them does. I, a rain, I thought Rhaena goes to to um the veil and bela stays behind what on dragonstone or high tide yeah, bela bela's on dragonstone okay oh uh, yeah um i think uh the, the you know sometimes sometimes we we uh we mix up twins you know this this happens ironically isn't, isn't um, that like a whole thing with fire and blood the twins get mixed up to keep them away from rogar barath yeah I, I make the joke that there's fucking what is it is, there's four there's four sets of twins in the story which is just kind of over the top i think there's eric and Arik. there's the lannister twins there there's the lannister twins of tybald and and jason mm -hmm. then there's bela bela and reyna mm -hmm. and then there's jaharis and jahara oh yeah i forgot about jaharis and jahara right oh wow right. twins galore four, god damn Four fucking sets of twins in the story at the during the Dance of the Dragons. For for those of you who Ridiculous. don't re don't know or don't remember, uh, and you know, spoiler alert, I guess um, atop, atop of a mountain of a bunch of spoilers, Helena's children with Aegon are twins, uh, Jaharis and yeah, yeah, Jahara. Yeah. Ridiculous, ridiculous, <sighs> ridiculous number of twins. Yeah. But uh, no, Bela on Moondancer, uh, this might be at Rook's Rest, or it might be the aftermath of Rook's Rest, we don't know. Rook's Rest is one of the major conflicts between mm -hmm. dragons. It's where Rhaenys gets on her dragon and is trying to defend one of the lords who have pledged for Rhaenyra, and she gets ambushed by both Aemon and Aegon on their respective dragons. And uh, my thought with this, they're clearly giving Bela more to do, which I'm completely okay with. They yeah. have the actress, might as well do something with her. Um, my thought on this is that she offers to go. Her grandmother, Rainey's, says no, but she goes anyway to try and help. And as Rainey's is winning that fight, because Rainey's, I say what you will about Vagar and Aemond and Aegon and Sunfire, Rainey's, I would argue, is more battle tested. She's older. Experience does matter. There is no substitute for experience. And I would argue that Rainey's, in the show at least, will be winning. And then Bela comes out of nowhere. One of the other two focuses their attention on Bela, and Rainey's loses because she's trying to protect Bela. Uh, I mean, you get, you get, yeah, they'll they'll do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're gonna do something to make to make Rainey's, uh death seem noble, right? Because mm -hmm. before it's just she gets punked and she, she gets punked and she gets killed, right? You know, uh, she she's she's 
um, she's just, uh, she's just kind of, she's just attacked. And um, this, you know, you, you, they want to give her a nice noble death, right? There's a question of whether or not Rainey's was really killed because the body is so burnt. They're like, is that Rainey's? In the show, oh god! I mean, depending on on how that. I mean, it's kind of funny, right? Right. The, we're talking. We're talking. Quentin is alive, right? Well, it, um, depending on what that 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 pompadour, that poof she's got going on with her hairstyle, depending on what that's made of. We might get a definitive answer. <laughs> She's burnt, and the fucking poof is also burnt. There's no question that it would be her if they kept that in there. Well, I mean, it's almost becoming funny, like a, just a joke at this point. Because, like, so they never find Dame. They, Damon Targaryen's body's never found. Mm. And they they do find Aemon's, but, you know, and they assume it's him because there's a sword dark sister is like through his eye or whatever when they find it but like it's amazing the num luke's body is never found um and then here in the show we have like we do the whole body unrecognizable with with lane or i mean it's it's just it's now getting almost ridiculous like how many bodies just can never be found you know um a Shara Dane's body never being found. Like no one's body's ever found. That's, they never that's, have the body. That's the book though. The show is going to have a more definitive answer. Cause we saw Vagar chomping on Luke and uh, his, his dragon. And at this point they're, yeah, they're fish food. We saw, we, we saw that splash of blood. You're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of which number four, Rhaenyra going to look for Luke personally. I like that Rhaenyra is actually taking the initiative. Once again, in the books, she just stays on Dragonstone yeah. and, you know, issues commands here. She's actually going out and doing stuff. And I like this change because once again, you have the actress, you're paying her. Why pay her just to have her mm-hmm. sit on her butt? Mm-hmm. Just have her go out and do stuff and she is and she we see her that's the first thing we see in the trailer it's it's brand new not in the books it's pretty 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 i mean you know it's pretty active for a for a woman who just gave birth yesterday oh yeah i forgot about that oh <laughs> that's shit. the thing is we forget we forget about the time like the time situation mm-hmm. but like like remember she just mar- miscarried her daughter like or not miscarried, stillborn, stillborn. She had a stillborn daughter, um, like the day before, and then she sends her. You know, then you know, Luke. She finds out her father dies, and then she finds out her son dies all in the same day, essentially. Um, and then, and then they, uh, yeah. I mean, even if you you want to pad a couple days on there, it's still like. She she still just went through childbirth, and but she she jumped on her dragon and flew <laughs> flew to You, you know what? End. I will I will say I'll I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and yeah. say it was like uh, seventy two hours at least. Give her that much. It was seventy two hours. <laughs> okay. Maybe she's been looking for a while. There's some dirt on her face. Like she's. I mean, you okay? Okay, I will grant that. Um, Amond isn't fucking telling anybody. So who's the one reporting? Somebody has to like find the body or find the stuff, report back to Storm's End, who then like sends a raven. You know that wait, that's wait. like there needs doesn't to be the whole some conflict time there. doesn't blood and she's happen because Aemon in the books Aemon says it does and Allison is horrified, but Aegon's like yeah, <sighs> right. Then who's sending? But you know the amount of time. Like I'm just thinking like. Who is, how is the information getting to Rhaenyra? Spies in King's Landing. No. Spies in the Red Keep. I suppose you're right. I mean, that could, <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. I'm assuming that's how um, it, 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 like, traveled back. Like, there's just, you know, oh, unless some random fisherman found a dragon's body and Luke's been gone for more than 72, or maybe a week. Luke's been gone for a week. Rhaenyra's... Like something's going on, and that final, final scene of Damon telling Rhaenyra—that's actually a, f- a f- flash forward, fast forward of uh, over a week later, where just Rhaenyra's just waiting for Luke to come back. He's to come back, and some fisherman finds his body, a dragon's body, reports it, and it gets out. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, it's it's just so funny thinking about like all the time, to- like time, you know, because because because. Uh, reading the text it's very difficult to figure out when events are happening and then in the show like you know because there's space between episodes you get this feeling of of time passing even if not much time has passed of course they're they're giving Rhaenyra something to do because she doesn't do that much in the in the in the books and but she's the main she's the main fucking character 
You got to have her doing something. You got to have her doing so something. So I, I so so far like what we've seen whether, whether her on the beach talking to Adam and Hall Adam Hall her personally looking for Luke like we see we're we're seeing the invented things for Rhaenyra to look active mm-hmm. um, rather than just her you know sitting alone and in a war room. Uh, number five is Alicent at the Lake. So, I'm assuming this is going to be some kind of CGI thing. The reason I say that is because I spoke to, once again, Mr. Yagen Yamans, and he says here to me in a, in a message, he goes, We have zero idea what Alicent's lake scene is, or where the set is. We know it's in episode seven because it was filmed by... Uh, Persateer, uh, for all we know, it's a dream. To reiterate, even spy reporters who know more than I do and are hesitant to share all details fully admit they have no idea what this is. I'm assuming it's it, this might be a CGI scene because a lot of these spy reports, if you notice, it's usually like drone footage or people like tucked away on like some faraway area using like I high power I, camera. I think that lake is an actual lake. Um... But we don't know. I think it, I think it's an actual like lake that people know about in the real world. Mm. But I think I think the reason it, they they got away with it because um, uh, without spies like figuring it out is that it's just one person. They just had one person going out to a site, and so you, you didn't you didn't need this huge team of people. You know, you just got the whole thing could be done with one camera, you know? So I think it's just that, like, like it's, it's, I think maybe that's it. Cause I don't know, like it's a lot cheaper to take an actress out to a real lake than it is to get a CGI lake. True. But this is a change from the books because for the most part, Alicent is mostly at the Red Keep. She does not leave King's Landing. Right. Right. So who knows? Who knows? And she's not wearing green. Uh, you, this is something Amber pointed out, and I think you pointed out later in your stream as well. There's a lot of butt shots going on. Not that I'm complaining, you know, Brazilian. I love that butt shots. But there's a lot of ass shots <laughs> this season. A lot of ass shots. Was that was that a thing in uh, in season one? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I, I'm surprised that, um, yeah, no, I mean, looking at that, that shot, she's, she's, uh, she's more hourglass figure than I thought. Um, Olivia Cook. Um, hey, not that I'm complaining, but it's just it's so random. There's been a lot of butt shots lately in, in television. I remember the butt shot. I don't know if you remember this. Remember we were watching Ahsoka, and in the first episode when we're introduced to Sabine, she's on the speeder bike. There's a moment where she's like turning, and it focuses on her ass a little bit. Well, uh, I mean, sex sells. I mean, this is this is this is the tits and dragon show, right? That is true. For the tits and dragon show, we didn't get a lot of tits uh, in uh, the first season, only from you know, orgies and sex workers. But for the most part, we don't really get anything from any of the main actors and actresses. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, we get some like some side boob or something of uh, of Rhaenyra, but. No, nothing, nothing. Um, we get, we get a, we get a man jerking off to feet more than we do get, and he, and look, hey, I'm not saying I need any of this to, to go down. I'm completely fine with it. But you want to know right. the, the funny part is we actually get some Rainey's boobs. Rainey's really? Yeah, but not in the show. The actress on the red carpet is wearing a see-through <laughs> dress. She's not wearing a bra, so that's like a whole thing. You don't know about this? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, Alicent on the lake. This could be a dream sequence. We talked about this on the stream. This could be a vision. Uh, this could be just her, you know, going out for a stroll. I, I don't recall any lake around, any lake of, of note around the King's Landing area. Uh, people are saying this might be the God's Eye, which the fandom's obsession with the God's Eye is insane. Right. Well, understandably so. But the lake seems too small for the God's Eye. But then again, they might just do it anyway. <laughs> it's like because they can hmm, i guess I, I i would i would say i i would agree with well something at the god's eye because doesn't aemon take hair hall after a while yeah well uh hair hall yeah it goes it goes in and out of possession so so daemon takes it and then aemon aemon takes it back and then uh, for, for, and then um uh, and then they fight uh, their their final battle there um so 
So it's yes. it, it, it might be possible that Allison goes to Hall or the God's Eye or I don't know. Maybe there's like a, a refuge there for women and Allison is hiding out there uh, instead of the Red Keep because of all the riots. I mean, what could be, what could be, okay, here's my guess on, on what it is. Okay, so we forget sometimes that Eamon is Allison's son and Allison loves her, her children, right? Mm. So like, so... Char having a vision of the lake mm. um, is like her having a vision of the death of her son. Okay, interesting. I like you that. Know? So, so like maybe she's ha- maybe she's having premonition or she's having visions about how each of her children will die. I'll take it. I'll take it. That, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right. Kind of like Cersei with uh, the uh, the right the shroud thing, mm-hmm. right? You know, but now she's getting she's getting how each one of her her kids will die. Maybe she has, she's gonna have a premonition of like of 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 poison of poison and of lake. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I was gonna I was gonna maybe say like my my assumption because it, it's probably a vision or a dream my assumption was if it's not a vision or a dream maybe there's some refuge for women there maybe she tries to take helena there because not only we're getting the riots but the blood and cheese incident uh being at king's landing is not safe for the royal women it's just not not a good not a good time kind of like how there's a... i don't know if any I, I don't know if anywhere in westeros is very safe fair but it, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like if Cersei is still in the Red Keep and Winds of Winter, that would be a, a really dangerous thing for her because, as far as we know, towards the end of Dance of Dragons, there's a serial killer running around inside the Red Keep. No one is safe there. No one should stay in there. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I like after after the death of Kevin, shouldn't everybody be like, let's move and Pycelle. Let's have let, <laughs> let's have our yeah and Pycelle. Let's have our small council meetings uh, at Rosby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, and and number six was the riots, what we which we just talked about. So, yeah, yeah lots of uh, well, not lots of changes, but I'm sure the trailer will show us more changes. And by the way, I have to say, I love that you said the thing about Kristen Cole, is that he looks older somehow in this couple week <laughs> time skip than he did in the ten year time skip in season one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I guess it's been like two days, two or three days. Well, yeah, I guess we don't, we don't know when we see him in, in that. But yeah, it's going to be a few weeks. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, man.